Hi everyone, I'm Nathan from the ebook reader blog. For this video, I'm gonna give you guys a comparison between the Kobo Ellipsa on the left and the Kindle Scribe on the right. So these two devices, they got a lot of overlapping features, but there is some significant differences between them as well. Uh, so let's talk about the build quality a little bit first. So the Kobo, it's made of plastic uh, housing and the uh, Kindle has a metal back. Uh, Kindle's a little bit thinner than the Kobo. The Kobo kind of has this taper though, where it's a little bit uh, thicker on the handle side and then it tapers down uh, to a little bit thinner on the other side, whereas the Kindle, it's the same uh, thickness. So both devices have that similar design where you got the handle side, which is a little bit larger. They both have that rotation sensor as well, so you can like flip between left-handed and right-handed. Uh, one difference with the Kobo is it will rotate to landscape as well. So the Kindle will rotate to landscape, but you have to set it to landscape in the settings. Uh, whereas the Kobo, it'll rotate all four ways. There's also a lock up here, uh, so you can set it to just rotate to portrait or landscape. So that's basically how the Kindle's uh, rotation sensor works. So uh, the Kobo is a little bit lighter. I think it's about 50 grams lighter than the Kindle. It's got the plastic housing instead of the metal, so it's a little bit lighter, um, a little bit uh, easier to hold that way. So the main advantage for the Kindle is the fact that it has a higher resolution 300 PPI screen, whereas the Kobo has 227 PPI. So the difference is definitely noticeable. It's not a huge difference, not like it's hard to read on the Kobo, but a clearer screen on the Kindle for sure. So they both come with a stylus. So the Kindle has the option for the premium stylus, which has a button and an eraser on the end. The basic stylus doesn't. Uh, the Kobo stylus has two buttons, one for erase, one for highlighting. I'll talk about those more a little bit later. Uh, let's talk about the front light now. That's another uh, main difference between these two devices. The Kobo, it just has the regular front light without adjustable color temperature and as you'll notice here it's kind of got a greenish bluish hue to it whereas the Kindle's a little bit more neutral and then the Kindle also has that warm lighting so you can kind of customize the color tone of the screen kind of help uh, you know in different lighting conditions you can kind of customize the lighting tone so it's not quite as harsh as like that blue lighting on the Kobo but one thing I do like about the Kobo is being able to adjust the front light by swiping up and down the screen it's really quite handy uh, the Kindle you have to go in and fumble with the sliders but the Kindle does have the auto brightness sensor so it will automatically adjust based on the ambient lighting and it has that schedule for the warmth lighting as well so when it comes to like uh, page turns and general navigation kindles are generally usually just a little bit zippier than kobo's and that is the case uh, here as well but like usual kobo has a lot more layout settings available than kindle so you have a lot more fine tune uh, of the margins and the line spacing and there's more font sizes as well uh, so that's definitely one advantage for Kobo software over Kindle software. So with the uh, scribe here, they got the margins even bigger than they used to be to accommodate a writing tool. So I don't know, that annoys some people, but with the Kobo, you can come in, you can get the words to go all the way to the edge if you want to. You got more control over the line spacing. So definitely an advantage as far as the layout goes if you want to have more control over the layout. So uh, the Kindle has the uh, pinch zooming for adjusting the fonts and the Kobo has that as well, but it's really wonky on the Kobo. I can never get it to settle on the font size I want. I always have to go into the menu and mess with it instead because it's just too touchy. So one of the main advantages with the Kobo as far as the stylus goes is you can actually write directly on eBooks. So you can go in, write on eBooks, no problem. Uh, so that's not possible with the Kindle Scribe. So if you, you try to use the stylus, it'll just like turn pages. Uh, but you do have the writing tool up here. You open this up and then you can switch it over to sticky notes. Or if you're using the premium stylus, you can set the button to activate the sticky notes. And then you tap somewhere on the screen and you can tie sticky notes uh, that way. So you can do the handwriting that way, but you can't write directly on the ebook uh, with Kindles, where Kobo's you can write directly on the ebook. Uh, the only problem with that is, is there's no way to export the notes on the Kobo. So it's really only going to be available on that device. Whereas the Kindle, you can export those sticky notes. Um, so you do have some more uh, options for that. And you can also add highlights with the Kindle as well. It's just uh, same kind of highlights as you would use with your finger. So you just hold down with the stylus or your finger. You can do that. You can access the dictionary, all the regular features. Uh, so it just has sticky notes instead of writing directly on the file. So the, that is one main difference. But like I said, with the Kobo, you can't export, export those notes or highlights at all. So a little bit less uh, useful with the Kindle. You can export your notes and highlights. Um, so it just kind of depends on what you need that way. Um, Kobo also has some more advantages with the layout. So you can have a header and footer with some different configurable options. And you got the different on-screen controls, which can be helpful with this larger screen as far as uh, turning pages go. Some people don't like how the page turns work on the Kindle. You have to swipe uh, instead of tap when you're holding it left-handed. Uh, so let's load up a PDF now, talk about the differences with PDFs on the Kindle and the Kobo. So both devices have the option to write directly on PDFs. You can add highlights. Then with the Kindle, you have the option to export by email, and then you'll get an option to download the PDF and it'll have all of your highlights and notes written on it. 
Um, the Kobo, it's the same kind of thing. You can use Dropbox to transfer your files, or you can um, you can just like use a computer to sideload the files, and then when you take the file off, it'll have the notes written on it and everything. So um, a little bit difference here with the uh, Kobo is it will only let you write like write on the PDF. Like here's some border here that won't let you write on the far edge. Um, so it's just restricted because I guess that's just where the margin ends on the PDF. You can't really tell on the screen, but um, where the Kindle, you can write all the way to the edge. It doesn't really care. Uh, and then the Kindle, you also have the different line spacing or the line size settings, the different highlighter size settings. You got your eraser tool, um, undo, redo, where with the Kobo, you only have what it gives you. You just have the one line spacing or the one line size thickness, um, the one highlight size thickness. There isn't any kind of eraser tools, but you can hold the button on the Kobo stylus to erase. Um, and then you hold the button, the different button to add highlights. So it's a little bit different uh, as far as the functionality goes, but I mean, they kind of basically work the same. Uh, one definite advantage for the Kobo is uh, you can uh, set the zoom level and it will remain. So the Kindle zooming is definitely smoother. It's a lot easier to like set it exactly where you want it. A little bit uh, twitchy on the Kobo, but with the Kobo, you can turn pages while it's zoomed in. You can also write while it's zoomed in. Um, and then you can, uh, yeah, like I said, it will maintain the zoom level. They added that in a software update a while back, so it'll maintain the zoom level. If you hold, uh, like swipe on the screen, it'll scroll, but if you tap, it'll advance page pages and maintain the zoom level so you can get rid of margins that way. Whereas the Kindle, once you zoom in, you can't turn pages. It's kind of weird. Uh, you got to zoom back out to turn pages. It won't let you, uh, it won't maintain the zoom level. But here's a weird thing about Kindles is if you sideload the same exact PDF file, instead of sending it to the Kindle, um, you have some different features like you can access the dictionary um, but you can't write on the pdf so it's kind of like a, this weird dual thing with the kindles they kind of like rushed it or something where if you send the pdf it's different features than if you just sideload the pdf if you sideload the pdf you have contrast control which is nice uh, i don't know why kobo's never added that you can make the text appear darker definitely an advantage you can also switch to landscape mode uh, with sideloaded PDFs on the Kindle, whereas if you mailed them to your Kindle, you, you don't have landscape mode. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I, hopefully, they'll kind of bridge these two types together uh, in the future so you have the same features on both of them. But moving on, we've got dark mode on both of these devices, so you can have the inverted text. Uh, you can have the white text, the black background. They do it a little bit differently where Kindle will invert everything. Uh, Kobo just inverts the ebook. It doesn't invert the interface at all doesn't invert the menus or the dictionary and stuff like that with Kindle does. So uh, let's move on to the notebook feature. This is another advantage for Kobo here. They have basic notebooks and advanced notebooks where the Kindle, it just has these one type of notebooks and then you can choose these different templates as well. So there's quite a few more templates for the Kindle uh, where the Kobo, when you're using the basic um, notebooks, you only have four different types of backgrounds and it always drove me crazy. It defaults to the graph paper instead of the line paper, but uh, you know, that's just one minor detail with Kindle. You got these several different types of lines. You got some different, you know, uh, checklist and calendar type of, um, you know, templates as well. Obviously you could kind of, uh, add your own templates to either of these devices. If you just wanted to use a PDF, but you're not going to be able to add the actual template to the interface here. So uh, this is where the Kobo has more stuff going on. You got some different type of pens where the Kindle has the same type of stuff I showed earlier with the different lines, uh, thicknesses, whereas the Kobo, you got a ballpoint pen, you got a fountain pen. So you're gonna have to excuse me here. I can't really show writing very well on these devices because anytime I write, it shakes the camera too much because um, the camera's atta attached to the table that they're on. So, I mean, with the Kobo, you got different pen thicknesses, you got different shading colors. Uh, so you got more, you know, just more features as far as the notebook app goes. But uh, for me, the Kindle, it has the Wacom touchscreen. Kobo has like the Microsoft pen touchscreen. The Wacom touchscreen's like smoother to me. It feels faster, the response. There's a little bit of lag with the Kobo, but I mean, it works well. But there's a little more lag. The pen kind of has a little bit of a scratchy feel to it. Uh, it's a little bit smoother with the kindles pen but i mean it might work a little bit better if you get it more worn down um i really don't ever use the notes on the kobo here so i don't even really know how this advanced notebooking app works but you do have some different features with these inserting tables and stuff and if you uh, double tap on writing not just a single word but like a sentence it'll convert your handwriting to type text so you definitely got some more advanced features as far as the notebook app goes on the kobo so when it comes to comics and manga, I mean, there's not going to be a huge difference between them since they have the same, you know, screen size, but the higher resolution on the Kindle uh, is definitely an advantage, gives a little bit clearer, 
you know, the image is a little bit clearer, text is a little bit clearer, everything's a little bit darker. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video right here. It just basically comes down to the different screens, the different front lights, different writing features on these two devices, but overall they're a lot alike. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this review. Check out the main reviews on the ebookreader.com. Goodbye.